spend our entire lives relying on others, trusting that someone else has done the hard yards so we can benefit from their results. So we can feel assured that when our health app notifies us, we've hit our 10,000 steps for the day, we're on the right path. We've grown up believing that we can measure anything, down to the nanosecond if required. But what if I told you, and what would be the impacts if those measurements were wrong? What if all measurements are wrong? That is why measurement uncertainty matters. If all measurements are wrong, then how do we know which measurements are right or useful? Let's start with a question that you may have heard before. How long is a piece of string? Or rope, really? This question is usually rhetorical, but what if it wasn't? Well, it depends on what you're trying to measure. For this piece of rope, let's start by using a measuring tape. How long is it? Is it 130 millimeters? Between 120 and 140 millimeters? Perhaps it's 129, plus or minus 2 millimeters. Which answer is wrong, and which answer is correct? All of these answers could be considered correct. It depends on the purpose of your measurements. But here's the thing, these answers are all wrong too. In fact, all measurements have a degree of wrongness about them. It's just a matter of how wrong we are willing to be. And this depends on your end purpose. Perhaps wrong is not the best word to use here. What I'm really referring to is the level of uncertainty or doubt we have about the measurement itself. Understanding this uncertainty in measurement, or measurement uncertainty, is critical for laboratories testing the products and services we use in our daily lives, but also for all of us to understand its impact and why measurement uncertainty matters. Without this understanding, you may risk the validity of your test results, not complying with your regulatory or contractual obligations, your reputation, and potentially your exposure to legal liability. But organizations can mitigate this risk through accreditation provided by independent third parties like NATA. Accredited laboratories understand that test results are your product and decisions will be made based on the quality of that product. Decision makers need to be confident that test results from laboratories are reliable, valid, and accurate. Let's look at some more examples to illustrate how measurements may be encountered in our day-to-day -day lives. Let's say you've had a bright idea. You want to change all your light bulbs to LEDs. Depending on the brightness you're looking for in each room, first, you might consider the brightness level that you need, and then choose a bulb with the lowest wattage. But what if you're an architect and you've been tasked with developing an energy efficient lighting installation? Suddenly, brightness and power consumption are both critical factors and the packaging for the bulbs alone will not contain the uncertainty associated with these numbers. Let's extend the use case further. Maybe you're an engineer, this time tasked with evaluating the neighbor's rating of an innovative office building. What other measurements might be important? You're going to pay more attention to measurements of electricity and gas, water consumption, and indoor air quality, among other characteristics. Here's another example where you may encounter measurements. One of my favorites, a jar of peanut butter. The nutritional information here is probably good enough for somebody counting their calories. But what if you were a dietitian, developing a treatment plan for somebody with complex food intolerances? The uncertainty associated with these values is strongly influenced by manufacturing processes and seasonal variation of the raw ingredients. So it may be risky to rely on the numbers as stated. And this is an example from one of my own blood tests. Note how the laboratory has flagged one of the results as below low normal. And for reference, they have included the normal range of results as seen here. Because these results came from an accredited laboratory, we know that the decision to flag a result is supported by an understanding of the uncertainty associated with that measurement. Test results from accredited pathology laboratories are used by medical practitioners to decide whether to continue or halt a treatment 
or to identify potential health issues before they occur. So, acceptable levels of uncertainty can differ depending on your context. Some are more life and death than others. To reiterate, if you are an accredited laboratory, test results are your product. Like any business, the quality of your product is a key component of what will make your organization successful, whatever that looks like for you. Embracing the risk arising from measurement uncertainty will help to reframe your approach to risk mitigation in a laboratory. Decision makers rely on the validity of your test results. This is why it's important for accredited laboratories to ensure that their test results are supported by knowledgeable and technically competent personnel. In addition to medical decisions, test results are used to decide whether an electrical product is safe for the public, treated water is safe for human consumption, or a construction project can proceed to the next phase. What's the risk to your laboratory if test results are not supported by an understanding of the limits of your measurements? What is the risk to your clients, your clients' clients, the public? Perhaps the risk is enough that you have to consider effects on your professional or public liability. There are situations where the measurement uncertainty of test results may be called into question. For example, during legal proceedings where test results from separate laboratories may seem contradictory. In such cases, the court may call upon someone with expertise in legal metrology. The expert would be familiar with the internationally accepted definition of measurement uncertainty, which states that measurement uncertainty is the non-negative parameter characterizing the dispersion of the quantity values being attributed to a measurand based on the information used. While this precise language may be useful in a legal or scientific setting, it doesn't convey the real-world application of uncertainty in a wider context, even more so if you're not mathematically inclined. However, you don't need to be a metrologist or statistician to gain an intuitive understanding of measurement uncertainty. I've been hinting that risk is inherently linked to measurement uncertainty. This is where accreditation can help. Risk-based requirements are baked into NATA's accreditation standards. Requirements in these standards are becoming less prescriptive. Instead, there's a focus on outcomes and accountability. In ISO IEC 17025, the standard against which testing and calibration facilities are accredited, competent personnel must be able to identify and evaluate test results that look wrong. The standard requires that laboratory personnel have competence to evaluate the significance of deviations. This is not a subjective evaluation because wrongness, that is the uncertainty of measurement, can be estimated and quantified. For a given test, the measurement uncertainty could depend on the readability of the measuring device, the repeatability of the test itself, and the operating range of the equipment, among other factors. Understanding measurement uncertainty isn't just for high-level technical managers. The risk to your laboratory is not having personnel who can spot when a result looks off. This is mitigated when all personnel gain an intuition for measurement uncertainty. It can also help you plan your equipment assurance program. For example, what simple checks can you do to show that your instrument is working correctly in its typical operating range? Because measurement uncertainty is quantifiable, you can set realistic and achievable acceptance criteria. When measurement uncertainty is properly estimated and incorporated into a risk profile, it can help you determine what level of wrongness you're willing to accept. Context is key. In pharmaceuticals, the margin between a toxic dose and a therapeutic dose can be as small as a few milligrams. In construction, Concrete is subjected to a variety of physical tests on-site and in the laboratory. The measurements for slump testing have a great deal of uncertainty, but this is fine. Slump is a simple screening test to determine the consistency and workability of freshly mixed concrete. On the other hand, the compressive strength of cured concrete is critical to structural integrity. Uncertainty in compressive strength results is reduced through the standardization of test methods, equipment, and the competence of the technicians doing the test. Thousands of workplace injuries are attributed to slips, trips, and falls. 
To mitigate this risk, the National Construction Code specifies that certain stairways and pedestrian surfaces are tested for slip resistance. Laboratories accredited for this testing know the importance of measurement uncertainty because in a court of law, their test reports may be called into question and an understanding of measurement uncertainty may be critical to their defense. When measurement uncertainty is properly estimated and incorporated into a risk profile, it can help you determine what level of wrongness you're willing to accept. There's an infamous example of one steel producer where the product specifications were too strict. The tolerances for the steel's properties were so narrowly defined such that they were beyond the capabilities of the associated testing. In other words, the measurement uncertainty of the tests was larger than the specified tolerances. Everyone in this organization knew that they would be unable to meet these strict tolerances. An incentive was then created to ignore deviations in test results. Eventually, its clients began to notice. Through independent external testing at accredited laboratories, it was revealed that the steel was substandard. This resulted in an international scandal that impacted not just the steel producer's reputation, but also the reputation of its staff and the entire industry. Not to mention the serious increase in risk to the public who work in steel buildings and drive steel cars. If something like this happens, it can result in days or months or years of incorrect results being released. And it may be nearly impossible to recall the affected products. Whether you're an analytical chemistry laboratory, a tissue pathology laboratory, or an asphalt laboratory, the importance of measurement uncertainty cannot be overstated. We know that all measurements are wrong to some degree. We can't escape that fact, but knowing is half the battle. This wrongness or uncertainty of measurement can be estimated and quantified, which empowers laboratories to control and mitigate the associated risks. In the standards used by NATA and other accreditation bodies worldwide, the shift from prescriptive requirements to outcomes that incorporate risk-based thinking is not going away. Accredited facilities who have embraced this shift have freed themselves from the outdated tick-box approach to compliance, and they can dedicate their resources towards the quality of their output. And while NATA accreditation provides confidence in your results to your stakeholders, it's the understanding of measurement uncertainty that can offer confidence in your own output. It's why measurement uncertainty matters and why measurement uncertainty is something to be embraced rather than something to avoid or fear. Whether you're a laboratory manager who's reconsidered how measurement uncertainty influences the presentation of your test results, or a technician that's gaining appreciation of how maths can save you in a court of law, the mathematics around measurement uncertainty shouldn't be a barrier to incorporating it in a laboratory. In fact, NMI, the National Measurement Institute, offers an introductory course on estimating measurement uncertainty. And to learn more about how measurement uncertainty is applied in an accreditation setting, visit nata.com.au and follow our socials. So for you and your purposes, how long is that piece of string or rope? <laughs> <laughs>